Genesis. Show my hardcore is. What's up, freaks, beasts, and athletes? It's DC here with dclayborn.com, Genesis Strength and Conditioning, and the home of Stacked and Jacked. Uh, here is this week's DC Blitzkrieg Q and A. Uh, got four questions that uh, I'll bang out here for uh, you know in a few. I got four questions that I'll bang out here for a few minutes. Uh, if you have any questions that you want answered for you know the upcoming week's videos, be sure to comment the, or drop them even on either either on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, at uh, I'll put a link there on Twitter or just uh, you know in the comments below either on my blog or on YouTube. Question number one is, uh, what would you suggest as far as eating and training for an advanced lifter to turn that extra fat into muscle? Uh, well, before I get started, um, going into kind of what I would do, I have uh, one thing to say is if you are an advanced lifter, then you already know that uh, you can't turn extra fat into muscle, and so I'm really doubting that you are as advanced as you think you are, um, but putting that aside, the, uh, you know, the, the, the way to do that is I would personally, um, the way I do it is personally follow uh, intermittent fasting protocols. I've talked about them before on video, on my blog, um, kind of all over the place. And then training wise, I would make sure I'm always lifting heavy, lifting hard, focusing on the big movements, uh, a ton of body weight work, and then a ton of, uh, then quite a few, sorry, I had to adjust the chair, quite a few conditioner uh, Metcon finishing stuff to do at the end of uh, workouts two or three days a week. Uh, question two. Uh, what workout would you suggest for an explosive leg uh, workout for a young athlete played with back problems and scoliosis? Uh, this one's a little more difficult uh, just because you didn't really talk about the severity of it. Um, you know, if you can uh, barbell work, if squats bug it, uh, stuff like that. So I'm going to basically give you some body weight drills that you can use um, to one, kind of help, uh, you know, with the explosiveness, but also kind of maybe help strengthen the back as well and hammer out some of the back issues that you may have with the scoliosis. So, you know, I'm not going to structure a whole uh, workout for you, but, you know, some of the key exercises you want to make sure you really get in uh, would be... Ah, not the camera. Let's try that again. The main work uh, exercises you want to get in with your workout would be things like, um, you know, single leg squats, uh, single leg, uh, you know, lunge jumps, uh, making sure that, you know, you're trying to spend as, as little, little time on the, in the, in contact with the ground as possible. You know, um, squat jumps would be good. Uh, even weighted squat jumps with a really light weight, holding dumbbells you know, or kettlebells down by your side would be a good movement. Um, box jumps because you're not going to have to, uh, really absorb the, the full landing of all the way back down. Um, stuff that I would avoid, avoid would be stuff like depth jumps, uh, weighted, uh, weighted jumps with the, uh, the barbell on your back, um, stuff like that. It's pretty much common sense to avoid if you have back issues and uh, you know, suffer from something like scoliosis. All right, uh, question three. Man, I've had issues all over today. All right, question three is the, what's the best way to structure training to include Olympic lifts? This one's pretty basic and easy. Always do them at the beginning of your workout. Um, if, you know, at least uh, three times a week. You know, if you're only going to do them once a week or twice a week, then really you're not going to get much benefit from them because they are so technical and so skill based that uh, you know, if you're, it's like uh, trying to practice football only once or twice a week, you're not going to get much better at it compared to someone that hammers it a little more. So try to stick some type of variation in with uh, you know every workout. It uh, doesn't have to always be heavy. Uh, stick it at the beginning of your workout, right after your warm-up. Uh, if you have speed training included in that workout or uh, jump training, you want to go warm-up, uh, jump training, or speed training, and then your Olympic lifts, and then your main lifts for the rest of the day, uh, for the rest of that workout. And then finally, question four is, I'm following your workout on your site. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, I'd love to hear some feedback and comments with anybody else who follows the workouts that I post, uh, the daily workouts. Uh, but anyway, I'm following your workout on your site. Where would I add in speed and conditioning days? Uh, it really depends on what your goals are. Uh, if you are training for a sport, if you know if you are getting into season, uh, coming out of your season, you know the further away from your season you are, you don't want to do as many conditioning days because there's really no need. You want to just maintain that base level of conditioning by working out hard and uh, focusing more on speed work. And then as you get closer to the 
season, you want to kind of trim back the speed work and focus more on conditioning. Uh, but you know, some basic guidelines is you want to, you know, I would do, you can either do your speed uh, work before workouts if you don't have the ability to do it on separate days. Uh, warm up, do your speed work, then work out. You do your conditioning at the end of workouts. So warm up, you know, speed work, strength work, and then, uh, you know, your conditioning. Uh, if you're able to split it up, like I said, beginning of the, you know, if you're far away from the season, I would stick, you know, two speed days in there on your off days. I recommend not doing a speed day the day after a heavy leg day, just because you're not going to work and, and move as as functionally sound as you should. Um, conditioning days can really be thrown in whenever. Just make sure you are good and warm before you attempt either one, especially if they're not coupled with another workout. So there you have it. Uh, there's this week's DC uh, Blitzkrieg Q&A. Appreciate you guys submitting your questions. I love to get them. Uh, so, you know, give me as many as you've got and I will get them answered. Uh, check out the links below. Got some free gifts for you guys. Now you guys know, knowing's half the battle. Genesis. Show my hardcore is, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yo.